I want to talk to you about what's on your mind. <laughs> Turn to Romans chapter 12. There we go. Very good. All, all y'all that know the Bible, Romans chapter 12. You know, I was thinking about how much money, Chris, while you were gone, we shouted Jesus just for you, and then you weren't here. We could. Okay, let's stand up and shout Jesus for Chris. You feel honored now? I know Jesus does. You know, um, it's amazing how much money is spent on people trying to change their life. <laughs> I'm not saying it's necessarily wrong. You know, there's some, I think, you know, life coaches and training and equipping. It's all, it's all good. But it's amazing how simple the Bible says it is to change your life. <laughs> so let's read the verse because you're all staring at me. Don't tell me I wasted money. Look. Verse 1, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Let me stop right there and just say this. Whatever you do after you meet Jesus is spiritual. Whatever you do with your body from that moment on is spiritual. Hopefully you're serving the right spiritual kingdom. But there's no such thing as secular when you receive Jesus. I want to be in the ministry. If you're saved, you're in the ministry. You may suck at it, but you're in it. You can be bad at it, but you're in it. I want to be a full-time minister. You are a full-time minister. There's only a royal priesthood. You know, years ago, we learned that um, in the book of Revelation, twice Jesus spoke to two churches and said, I hate the deeds of the Nicolaitans. The word Nicolaitan means conqueror of the lay people. They're the people, they were the theologians that separated the priest and the people. Made two groups of people, the people who got ministered to and the people who minister. You know, and that creates, I come to church to be ministered to. No, you come to church to get equipped so you can do the ministry. <laughs> uh, Banning spoke the other day and, uh, here, it was beautiful. He, he, you know, they started, they planted a new church and and uh, somebody came to him and, and said, uh, what does this church do for the poor? And he said, well, I don't know. What do you do for the poor? You're the church. <laughs> now, I understand there's another side of that. I understand that sometimes, uh, I mean, oftentimes we have corporate expe expressions of that, and I think it's beautiful and good. But how many understand you can't start with the church? I can't start with the... <laughs> you are the church. You can't start with the organization. It has to be in our hearts. And I, I love what Banning was said when he, he said, they said, what do you do for home groups? And he said, I don't know, what do you do for home groups? Invite some people over who love Jesus and talk about Jesus. And we have home groups here, so don't nobody get mad at me. I'm just saying, when you know you're a priest, when you know you're a minister, you're not waiting for someone to minister to you. you you've come here to be equipped so you can do the ministry. I work at the nail salon. You are a minister at the nail salon. Hallelujah. You're bringing the kingdom wherever you go. Well, I work in a dark city. Well, not when you're there. I mean, I would agree before you got there, it could be, but it can't be now because you're there. You're the light of the world. And wherever you show up, light shows up. And darkness flees when light shows up. Well, I work for an evil boss. Yes, but he has a righteous servant. What's more powerful, an evil boss or a righteous servant? I don't know. Ask Daniel and Nebuchadnezzar. I get, I get all these crazy people. Well, they're, cra they're not crazy. They're nice. they're nice crazy people. But and They write articles on things I preach, which I think is so beautiful. I mean, I actually like the attention. <laughs> 